Have you ever wondered what it's actually like being a woman filmmaker? In today's episode, we're gonna be hearing from some of the most renowned US-based TV directors working in the industry today. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I'm Juliana, and this is Juliana Talks Films, the channel where I explore and examine films and filmmakers. If you love films and filmmaking, consider subscribing for weekly videos. Today, I'm bringing you along as I react to Variety's TV Directors Roundtable. I've been wanting to do a reaction video for a while, so let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So let's go ahead and jump into it. All right. Alright, so this is a little bit on the older side. It was TV 2018, so about two years ago. Still very relevant today, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Let's see. I already love a lot of these women. Having these kind of connections and networks where we can support each other so that we don't feel like we're in competition with each other because I think we all have very specific and singular voices that are all so important and that we support each other with those voices. Um, so I think it's just about bringing the next generation up and also, you know, crewing and being very conscious of that and making sure everybody that you bring into this family has a priority to bring in other women and other people of color. Like, I think that's something you can do tomorrow. I haven't yet directed an episode of TV without a mentee, a female mentee. Mm -hmm. Just, you yeah, yeah you I mean, too. at least you feel like if, if you get nothing else right, you right. left yeah. that on mm -hmm. the field. I've been mentoring uh, women directors for a long time, right. and I am very happy to say that so many of them are working all the time. Oh, that's great. And it certainly hasn't harmed me working. Mm -hmm. no. It has, in, it, there, cool. there is work out there, plenty mm -hmm. of work. I think if you're in a position to hire, mm -hmm. you, you need hire. to be really conscious of that and grab the hand of the next generation. Right. When I started directing, if I thought we'd still be discussing this in 2018, wow. yeah. I would have said absolutely oh, not. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it is still an issue is just staggering. Right. But I do think things are changing. It's the first time I really feel they're changing. And for me, it's about an equal playing field. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't be harder for our, our, our daughters to direct than for our sons. It Absolutely. should be the same. It's difficult yeah. for everyone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's make it equally right. difficult. Yeah. But, 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 but it's true yeah. about crewing. And yes, so you have to be my really conscious. biggest thing is education. Mm -hmm. So right. look around this room. Every single camera except one is manned by a guy. Sorry, no offense, but mm -hmm. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. In season three of my show, I asked my uh, producer and DP, I said, I need a female key grip. Mm -hmm. There is no fucking way that this doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So I got one and she came and I met her. I loved her instantly. Mm -hmm. Her name's Amy Snell. And we talked and she told me about the union, that there's like, yeah, so the numbers get, are yeah. so small. And they make it difficult. But here's the thing, when you're crewing, there are so many jobs mm -hmm. that young women don't know about. Right. My focus puller, my camera department, all of it. I just want people to learn about the jobs that are available. Mm -hmm. Why is it a guy get thing? get the skills. It's well, like, and get the skills. It's also, you know, I heard in so many of the stories that you guys were just telling, you didn't even know that was an option. Right. So I yeah. do think that like a That's moment right. like knowing, this is really yes, important and right. knowing what the options that's are. Right. And I do think some of it has to do with the fact that we are still fighting against a system that makes little girls grow up to dream of their wedding yeah. and not mm -hmm. of the many, many things Ew. that they yeah. can do <laughs> in the world, you know, and how they're going to shape their lives and what kind of life they want to be living and yeah. what they want to do with their hands right. and they want to do with their minds. And I think, you know, that's part of what is changing. And then we support with, okay, and here are the places you can go. I think that's true across the board for anyone, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman. I think there tends to be this singular focus on directors and, you know, writers and to some extent producers, um, but people don't really talk about the mass amount of crew that is behind making a film. Like, it's kind of, it's, it's staggering. I mean, just to name a few people, like, you could be a writer, a producer, an editor, an assistant director, a gaffer, a cinematographer, um, audio mixer, set designer, um, costume and wardrobe stylist, makeup artist, script supervisor, food stylist, motion graphics artist, special effects artist, stunt coordinator, casting director, music composer, sound designer. I mean, that 
in itself, like that, it's almost 20 other crew jobs that are available and that are necessary in order to make a film happen, but those things aren't really talked about. And so we tend to give all of our attention and focus on, um, again, directing and, and writing and to some extent producing, but there are tons of other creative avenues for people to explore within filmmaking. So I think that's an important, it's a very, very important conversation that needs to continue ha happening, not just for women, but I think for anyone that's interested in making films, men too, um, just knowing your options, knowing that it, you don't just have to be a director or a writer or a producer to make movies. I guess it makes a great difference to the chemistry of a set. Mm -hmm. right. Oh my God. Because I started, you know, when I started yeah. directing the BBC, there were no women yeah. on the set, and it was a lot of grump, you know, talented, good, but, but grumpy guys, you know, and you would have to deal with an entrenched, you know, perspective. In my first movie in New York, um, Ellen Kuris was the DP, mm, and there were amazing. all kinds of yeah. women on set. Homeland, uh, we, our crew is very 50-50. You come on the set and you're like, wow, mm -hmm. it, it, because 50-50 feels very female, because we're so used to, right. to yeah, it being right. so yeah. out of balance in mm -hmm. that way. It's a great cultural shift and we do have yeah. to remember where we came from and it was yeah. not that long ago. It was as I said, when I grew up, I never saw another female face. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, and little really by little things did change yes. maybe. And, and, and when it did change, I think, I think crews were so much happier. Yeah. Yeah. Because it used it's, to be like me and a whole bunch of guys yeah. in a yeah, town yeah. somewhere, <laughs> you know, all with guys <laughs> stuck together and they didn't see their families, mm -hmm. they didn't see their wives and their kids and they were, you know, it was like being in a boys camp. As times changed and where we've had a little bit more, I don't think that it was some kind of conspiracy where people were trying to keep <laughs> women down and there was like a hand, secret handshake yeah. about it. I think it was just nobody was it wasn't thinking. wasn't thought of. I didn't think of it. I yeah. mean, I grew up making movies. It never occurred to me as a director it never occurred to me to seek out mm -hmm. women crew members. Mm -hmm. I saw I saw the guys that I worked with, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the guys yeah. that I That's knew right. that I thought mm -hmm. were doing great work, and it, it almost it never occurred to me, and I'm almost ashamed of that. Mm -hmm. No, um, until recently, where I realized that you know we do have, you actually have to make an effort. Yes, yes. absolutely. Um, and it isn't just going to happen because you think it's wrong, and then you you don't change anything. I mean, you actually have to make an effort, mostly to allow women to have those first jobs and the mm -hmm. second jobs. To Jodie Foster's point, I think when we have these conversations about inclusivity, um, gender bias, racial bias within the entertainment industry, there tends to be kind of like an accusatory tone. When you really take a step back and, and look at the whole picture and really think about it, I don't think anyone's actively doing that, you know? I don't think people are actively like trying to find ways to keep women or people of color or minorities out of the entertainment industry. There's also this counter argument that, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, so what, we're just supposed to, you know, give the jobs to less qualified people because of their gender or their race or whatever. And no, nobody's saying give the job to the imbecile who doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. Like nobody is saying that because that's obviously not going to work. What people are trying to say is, hey, be conscious and be um, aware of these other filmmakers who a thousand and ten percent have the experience and the expertise and the knowledge and know-how to come in, give them the opportunity to come in and um, work on this bigger production or work with this brand name director or what have you, you know? So um, it's not about taking jobs away from well-qualified people. It's about giving more opportunities, opening up those opportunities to more, to other qualified people. With that said, also, if you are a woman or a person of color or a minority that is given the opportunity to be on set or to work on um, a, a big project, you really have to show up. You know, you really have that added pressure um, to give it your 1,010% all and prove that you are just as good, if not better, than your counterparts that were already there and were already um, given these opportunities. And that might seem unfair to some people, but at the end of the day, you just have to focus on proving and demonstrating that you deserve a spot on that table and that you deserve to be on the next production and the next and the next, and then building yourself up from there. Yeah, so anyway, let's keep going. <laughs>
get calls about episodic TV and then I meet on a pilot and I can feel what I imagine is like, but I'm, can I give you this? Like I had a producer say, there's football in the scene. Can you, I'm like, uh, I, right. I can do football. <laughs> I can, or someone said, you know, this might be good. You don't have to blow anything up. I was like, I can blow Things shit up. up. Yeah. So I, 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 and I understand it. If I'm writing a pilot, uh, this is a big deal. This is years and years in the past, possibly, and years potentially in the future. You want to feel like you're giving it to someone. But I, I think there might be something going on in there, in the thinking of what it means to hand that to a woman. I think there might be a hiccup. Uh, Maybe I even have the hiccup. I don't know. But I can like, feel it when it's mm, fi yeah. gender bias psychology right. is so Indeed. entrenched that we, we even have it too. Mm, and we don't even realize right. it yet. Right. Right. So, I mean, that cultural shift is mm. slow to happen, but it happens through, yeah. you know, a learning process. I mean, women are seen as a risk. Mm -hmm. Women directors are seen as a risk, and I don't really understand why, mm -hmm. but it's um, it, 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 it means just that people I'm sorry, make I just have strings. So such a funny period. thought. I was, like, I was like, I know women are so emotional, because our president right now is so not emotional. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I had this Running thought of like... <laughs> You're not tweeting in the middle of the night, Tracy? It's like, he just is very emotional, but anyway. I, no, I think the reason that they're seen as a risk in some ways is because they were foreigners. Right. Uh, right. They just were people who different. looked different and mm -hmm. they spoke right. a different language and we just didn't know what they were going to do when we handed them $10 million. Mm -hmm. And um, hopefully that, that, that really is just an ingrained yeah. psychology that mm -hmm. shifts with knowledge. And they yes. remind me of my scary mother. Yeah. <laughs> I really... I do think oh, that. Wow. Feel it happen. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I don't want to. Are you okay if we do this? I'm like, okay, so yeah, you're the yeah. producer, you're, and being a well known woman, also, I yes. can feel the projection yeah. is like yeah. 50 things are coming at me. So the first few hours is just like, it's okay. It's okay. Mm -hmm. yes. you're, you wrote it, so yeah. I'm here to serve you. I got right. that. I know I have a plan, so I got that. And then they kind of go, oh, okay. Okay, everything's okay. Yeah, but well, it's a lot. I don't think men. You've probably had maybe. this been told, you know, we hired a woman once and it didn't work. Yes, 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 you that's know, the worst. Which yes. you would never yes. say that's, to, that's, you would never say we hired a guy once. Mm -hmm. didn't, work. didn't work. No so more guys. No more guys. We're done with those guys. Mm -hmm. So I think, again, this idea of being lumped together rather than seen individually as individual directors. But I, I do feel that that is indeed changing. I don't believe there's someone twirling a mustache chest in a back room going, keep them out. I don't think it, I think it's much more unconscious. <laughs> yes. Than no. I yes. what you were saying too about like, how we're, like, if the content demands a woman to have this voice because she understands the story better than right. they're going to I, think I that. also don't think stories are gender right. related. Yeah. Like, no. like yeah. if, you know, men have directed women wonderfully and, in yes. romantic comedies and romances and, you know, if, if a woman is interested in directing an action piece mm -hmm. or a comic book movie, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. As long as that's what they want to tell. Mm -hmm. That's the story they want to tell. And I think the hardest thing, I always I always feel as a woman director I've felt in the past that I wasn't allowed to fail. Mm. Every that's, single movie has to do well. That's if you do that's one that doesn't do well, mm -hmm. then suddenly you just feel your stock mm -hmm. drop. Yeah. Whereas I do, you know, I do feel as a, a male director of the same level, you know, oh, give them a couple of movies, you know, let right. them right. three, you know, right. let them just work yeah, it out. They're so good, thing. you know, let them try. Yeah. So I think not being allowed to fail, and then I think the thing that I've uh, learn to fight with is not internalizing that yes and then oh. you know because I do think that women have turned on themselves rejection or you know self-doubt self anger um, and you have to, you have to which I don't think men do I don't think that men blame themselves the same way that we mm -hmm. do if a film doesn't well, do well we're taught mm -hmm. to, well, yeah. we're taught yeah. to and yeah. and then it's internalized yeah. so when I had my uh, you know a film you know a couple of them didn't do as well as the they were supposed to and I always think I've got to get myself back to that woman who had never made a movie mm. where nobody thought could direct right. and who is that person who had the confidence to make that first right. movie right. and sort of psychologically always try and get myself mm. back and just you know and hey if, if I can't get a movie made then make a movie for nothing you know, make a movie for hundred thousand dollars. I think I think that's something that we we also battle within ourselves. It's not just outside. So this is actually a really good point. These ingrained um, gender bias stereotypes that we have in our minds a thousand and ten percent affect the way we um, we interact with people and uh, the kinds of jobs that women are able to get in in films and in TV. We all have ideals and expectations of what men and women can and should sh 
can and can't do and what they should and shouldn't do. Also, I just have to say that it is extremely sexist that anyone, anyone would ever say, oh yeah, we tried having a woman director once and it didn't work. Like that is bananas. I cannot believe that anyone would have the goal to say that. You're pretty much grouping all, gr grouping all women directors together and saying that all women directors are this particular way or have this particular style or aesthetic and that beyond those parameters that people set, they can't do anything else. Like that, that's just ridiculous. No one would ever say to a male director, um, yeah, we tried ha having a man director once and it didn't work out. That would never ever happen. So it's just, it just blows my mind that anyone would think that it's okay to say that. I'm a huge preparer, mm -hmm. and it must be from being a choreographer, but I, I plan everything, and then I hope magic will happen. Right. You know, I hope something that I've never thought of alone in a room, yeah. but yeah, I've got to, I've got to plan it all out first. I'm the same, like you, I always base each story in the research, like, so I just dive yeah. into, like, that time, the characters, the story, the colors, the art, the history of whatever, you know, story I'm trying to tell the architecture. And then from there, like a painting kind of comes alive, right? And I have a vision um, for how to tell that story visually, yeah, you know? Yeah, I, I can see that. And, yeah, <laughs> you, you, you get a, yeah. Like if you take the script away, this story is still yeah. told. Yeah. I prepare myself in that way. And then I do shot lists and storyboards mm -hmm. and like overly prepare and then get on set and it stays in my pocket usually. Yeah. But I know I have that confidence I if I need to go back into it that I can depend on. Yeah. And then still trying to be open to seeing when you're on set, because that is where the magic happens, things that you would never expect happen. It's funny, because it's taken me this long to realize that I don't like to do that. I, mm -hmm. I do a lot of preparation, do a lot of research, and I work yeah. out a visual plan. I work yeah. out, I, I, I kind of always have key references. I mm -hmm. want it to look like this, and those sections look like that, mm -hmm. and have photographs and paintings and a lot of all that stuff. But I realize, I actually hate, I, mm -hmm. I, do, I hate to storyboard. I'll do it for an action sequence or something involving mm -hmm. visual effects, but it's not my strong point. And I actually, you know, I'll do shot lists and I don't Can stick I to them. Question? You said it's not your strong point, point or it's not what you like? I just know what I like oh, to do. okay. <laughs> yeah, that, I was just curious. It's not what I like to do. Okay. And I don't like to shot list. And I realize that I, I come from a very different mentality. And I've had to fight and, and get confidence in myself that I don't work. I work in a different way. I, I actually asked a lot of questions. I did a lot of prep before, and the best note I got, I was because I had a lot of nervousness around, mm -hmm. I don't know how to call it a right thing. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, I, do the, I want it. So the best note I got was make sounds and use your hands. I wanted to go like, I wanted to go, I want it like, and I did so much of that and it totally worked. And then by the end of the scene, I knew what that thing was called. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was like, I learned to swingle. Like it was fantastic. <laughs> I think I used to worry about everything equally, including things I had no control over, mm -hmm. like whether it would the rain. Weather. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whether it would rain. I could worry about the rain for a very long time. And I think one of the things now is that I will worry about things I can actually have an impact on. Mm -hmm. But the things I can't, I don't spend a lot of time on. Mm -hmm. And I think, again, I would, I would tried to control a lot of things mm -hmm. in the beginning, and I love accidents. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just yeah. an opportunity for something amazing to happen. Mm -hmm. I wish I'd known that the technical stuff is just a means to an end, and mm -hmm. if you don't know it, you just ask somebody, and that there is an entire team of people there who know, mm -hmm. know it better than you ever will, yeah. and you simply have to know what you want. Mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. I think I would have started directing yeah. earlier with more And the crew wants so to be asked and empowered, right. I find. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I did the movie with Nancy Myers 20 years ago, and I'm trying to think how many other women were probably directing giant movies. Maybe zero? Mm -hmm. Well, Betty Thomas. Mm -hmm. Betty Thomas. Yeah, not quite this big, but yeah. Penny Marshall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Penny Marshall. Mm -hmm. But I remember her saying, um, whatever, however they were pounding yeah. on her, what I remember her saying is, you've hired me to land this plane safely. I'm very open and collaborative and I feel like I have a really good, I'm not sure what to do, what do you think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. While secretly holding on to my plan. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but so to smart. also always have that muscle of like, at the end of the day, you've hired me mm -hmm. yeah. to do this. Mm -hmm. And you have to trust that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I wish I'd done more sit-ups. Okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> I 
personally love this round table. I think it's um, super empowering to hear from all of these incredible directors talk about their process, talk about their experiences, um, and, and give their advice in terms of how they approach um, filmmaking and, and um, you know what they would change differently or, or you know what they found to be incredibly helpful. So I want to hear from you guys. What bit of information did you take from these filmmakers um, that you will now take on your filmmaking journey? Leave me a comment below and let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and. I'll catch you guys in the next one.